you're in the business of protecting companies, protecting their information, but we now have Edward Snowden mm -hmm. on the run, and the whole episode, doesn't that suggest to companies that you can do everything and still have a disgruntled employee in the next cubicle over stealing uh -huh. your stuff? Uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, when you look at the Snowden incident, it is really hard to safeguard yourself from thousands of employees. At the end of the day, there's a personnel security issue as well as a cyber issue here. And you can't monitor everyone all the time. That's very draconian. It's very almost frightening if you monitor everybody's keystrokes and everything they do all the time. Uh, so there's just a lot of natural challenges that come out of this issue. You know, you want your employees empowered. You want to push down empowerment, which means you do have to push down access and push down the ability to make decisions at large organizations. So uh, this is a tough issue and uh, one that's never going to go away. Now you're very involved in looking at uh, cyber espionage coming mm -hmm. out of China. Uh, Snowden went to China, he went to mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Uh, he also claimed that NSA had been hacking uh, computers in China. Do you think that whole issue muddies and complicates this our negotiations over how to uh, prevent or limit Chinese espionage of our com of our companies? I can tell you that it's been my observation after over 15 years of responding to Chinese intruders that China, just like America, wants to be the best at what they do. They want the best economy for their country. They want the best education for their children. They want to have a middle class that's prosperous. And if they can gain advantage to do so by hacking, they'll do it. So I think that this is just the new normal. We can have all the dialogue we want, but there will always be a competition between the world economies, and it's here to stay to get that competitive advantage through cyber espionage. Your company is built on the proposition that you actually cannot protect yourself just with firewalls. That it will, the breakthroughs will happen. You guys have to come in. We always say you've got to reduce your target area to as small as you can get it, but I don't think it ever gets to zero. If you've hired people, it will not get to zero. So what we try to do is say, mind that gap. You always have a target area where you could be compromised. You should always know how that could happen and make sure if it does happen, you're 10 minutes behind it. You'll never close it because the minute you close that gap, you're probably in an inoperable business. You're not mm -hmm. on the internet. You don't have a website. No one can check their email. Mm -hmm. And you cannot check Facebook and you cannot tweet and you can't do anything. So culturally, that's just not permissible. In fact, what I see is the gap going like this a little bit right now because we have uh, a generation of people that the internet and its access and social media is like oxygen. That's what I was going to ask you. So, I mean, with more Facebook and, right. and, and Twitter and so forth, that almost makes right. companies more vulnerable? I think it does, and it's not Twitter's fault. It's not Facebook's fault. What it is is just people. What we've really done is we've taken enterprise security, how to secure a company. And now that the challenge for the chief information security officers who need to secure a company have to think, like, how do I secure consumers? Right. You know, it goes beyond my borders now in so many businesses. And well, it's secure employees. I mean, secure so, everyone yeah. in their house. You know, because you're going mobile now, you're bringing your phones everywhere, you're bringing your iPads everywhere. And if you have a job where you have to open up email from outside your own corporate network, uh, you are at risk.